Good afternoon, or I guess good morning, depending on where you are today. I am so excited to be part of our Food Zoomer Summit, and I know you got off to a really great start this morning. We've got wonderful speakers all day, and I'm so honored and privileged to be in the middle of that. We are going to look at the business side of things in the hour that we are going to spend together. And the reason for that is you know, twofold. There's tons of great information you're going to get today, right, on the clinical side and the application side and the utilization side of the food zoomers that Vibrant offers. But what I find a lot of times in practice is we need to work on the business side and the communication side in order to make sure that we get the, the correct message to our patients and we increase adherence and quite frankly, the best clinical outcomes as a result of that. So my goal today is to share bits and pieces of that type of knowledge as we walk through how to utilize Zoomers in practice, especially from a functional medicine practice standpoint, um, you know, then creating all that individualization that you want for your patient, but really looking at it from a business side of things to help and empower all of you um, to do bigger, better, right, in, in, on the business side of things. So that's the approach that we're going to take over the next hour, and I'm excited to share that with you. At the very end, I'll leave a little time. If there's some specific questions you guys have out there, happy to answer them and help you through um, the side of things. So as we go through this, I'd like to just share a little bit of information with a little bit more background about me. And really, there's only two pieces of information you truly need on this slide. Number one is my email and number two is my phone number. And those things are in the top left-hand corner. And the reason I want you to have those is because my goal even beyond this hour is to continue to be able to help you. So if there are things you want to learn how to do better or you have questions on or you need clarification, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, best is actually via phone number and via text. I'm not too great at listening to messages, but I'm really pretty good and pretty quick at responding to text messages. So shoot me a quick text. Tell me who you are, I'm happy to answer your questions. And I probably should give you this at the end and I just might too if you have those, but you have it there. If it's a little longer detailed or you like email better than text, you're certainly welcome to do that. I'm not great at responding to email, so please stalk me or at least shoot me the text and say, hey, Dr. Cindy, I sent you an email, can you take a look at it? And then I can get back to you that way too. Um, little bit of background. I've been in clinical practice outside of Chicago for, Oh, about 22 years now. And I started my practice as a chiropractic physician, but really in the internal medicine and nutrition space and what we now call functional medicine, right? So with that, I have been utilizing food sensitivity testing for, oh boy, all of those 22 years and fell in love with Vibrant when I met with them and was aware that this company existed and haven't looked back. And it's been a really great experience because I really believe that they offer something in terms of these Zoomer tests that really doesn't exist elsewhere, right? And it's brought so much value to that portion of my practice that I can't imagine really not having that tool in my toolbox. Along with that, my background besides just being a chiropractic physician is actually in sales. So before I went to school for chiropractic, I was in sales and was selling long distance and all kinds of really fun, crazy things and learned a whole lot about that type of business. And as I explained to all of my clients in the consulting world, truly I believe one of the main reasons that I've had success in practice is not so much just the education I've received and the knowledge that I store in my head and the ability to, you know, to implement that in practice. And that's all really important, but it's really my sales background in this business aspect of how to communicate really well with my patients that really has brought me the most success in practice. And that's one of the things that I love to share, which is why Vibrant was kind enough to invite me to share some of those ideas and those thoughts with you. And then you can see the list of other things. Feel free to peruse that if you want to. But those are the, the key things that I bring to the table here today. And you're gonna see that as we move through some of these slides. So my first question is, do you think you have all of the tools that you need in your toolbox? And this is, you know, a good old fashioned bag, right? Most of us probably don't carry this anymore. But when we look at all the different tools, one of the most important ones, right, is some of the testing that we have available. And in this whole Zoomer world, it gives us quite a bit in that toolbox in order to achieve some really good clinical outcomes. But besides that, what other tools are in your toolbox so that you have the capability 
of getting that tool in your patient's hands, right? So we all can learn and you're gonna learn throughout today how valuable they are clinically, these particular bundles of Zoomers, but really getting this tool also in your patient's toolbox so that they can utilize it is really gonna give you the best outcomes at the end of the day. So we're gonna look at that and at the end of the session, you're gonna to have to answer, do you have the right tools in order to accomplish this? So in my practice, let's talk about why I run Zoomers. And I, again, I love this because we basically, along with the food sensitivity test, are isolating exactly what foods we need to eliminate in a much more comprehensive or advanced way than any other test out there, right? And the gist of that is because we're looking at the peptides, right, that make up that entire uh, component of food to get microscopic, if you will, to get very specific, to get down to that detail, right, where the success rate is going to be much higher because we're hitting on things that we may not otherwise pick up. And to me, it also helps us really stand apart, right? So whether your goal is to reduce symptoms or let's say lower inflammation and improve immune system, um, which correlates again with being successful in practice, this is something that's gonna stand out to utilize because quite honestly, nobody else is doing this, right? This gives us a tool that's unique. And what I find is, and I'm sure a lot of you out there are struggling with some of these challenges too, is that, you know, besides just coming into our office and, and getting a test, we now find this all over the internet, right? And you can Google these things and you can have access to all kinds of different tests. And we struggle a lot of times with our patients as to communicating with them, what is the right test? What is the benefit? What are you going to get out of that? And which company to utilize? And what's great about Vibrant is we have access to something, right? That even out there, a lot of times patients are not going to find necessarily on our own. Um, we're going to need to get them, whether it's in office through our own website, through you know our social media connections. Um, we can get this test into their hands, our hands to treat, right? But into that patient um, repertoire in order to help. Okay. And then what I found in clinical practice is this is going to help increase my adherence, right? And this is what we need. So patient comes in. We know that we're presenting them with opportunities to get well. The question is, is this to really follow through, right? And, and a lot of times seeing this on paper, seeing the value, understanding how in depth we go with the Zoomer is gonna increase that patient adherence to wanna to follow that. One, because they've made a financial commitment. Two, because they realize the information is invaluable and clinically is gonna help them. And then three, we really have something legitimate that's very individualized for that person um, versus a one size fits all, right? where it's just follow this or just follow that, we can be very creative around our treatment protocols because now we have individual test results through the Zoomers for this particular patient. And at the end of the day, what are we doing? Well, we're helping that patient achieve their goals, right? Regardless of what the symptom is or what the condition is, we want them to feel like their goals have been accomplished. So just to give you an example, this is a, a patient that's been in my office. This is a couple years old at this point, um, but she's somewhat of a typical patient and at 64 years old, she was referred to me by another chiropractic physician who runs basically a musculoskeletal practice, doesn't do a lot of the nutrition type work that I do. And she came in with a diagnosis already from her medical doctor of ulcerative colitis. And, you know, colitis, of course, being inflammation, um, one of those things that we always associate back to foods, right? And looking at the inflammatory properties and how testing the food zoomers can really get us to the core of what we need to eliminate in a patient's diet. She was suffering from gas, from bloating, diarrhea, chronic fatigue all day long, didn't matter what time of the day it was. Um, I think even the fibromyalgia was a little bit more self-proclaimed than diagnosed, but still a lot of those symptoms that fit into that were there. Previous diagnosis of Hashimoto's thyroiditis, right? Like from an immune system standpoint, this poor 64-year-old woman was just a mess, right? And even more importantly than just the words you see on this screen, you know, there was a sadness that when she came into my office talking about how she doesn't go out with her friends and she's afraid, right, to be out somewhere in public because of the condition, she never knows when it'll hit. She never knows if she can make it to the bathroom. She never knows how long she'll be in the bathroom. And really her quality of life was drastically affected, right, as a result of the symptoms slash the diagnosis that she received. So, you know, this is typical, right? And you're gonna see probably a lot of these types of presentations with some of the other speakers from a clinical standpoint. 
but just to show you, um, you know, what we deal with every day, right, in the practice. The reason I actually picked her to show you was something very interesting in our internal medicine world. And even though I don't have all of her test results to show you here today, um, I put up a section of her blood work that we ran. And I put everything into a chart and I put the arrow exactly where I wanted you to look. And when we look at things that are off, either from a lab standpoint, they typically show up red in my computer program. They show up yellow if it's more homeostatic or subclinical. But what's really interesting is when you look at the CBC on your patients and you look at the section within the white blood cell count, and you look at neutrophils and lymphocytes, there's a trigger there that makes me think we really need to look even more so in a food direction than we normally would. And that is a reverse of the ratio, if you will, of lymphocytes and neutrophils. So neutrophils are generally higher than lymphocyte count on a CBC when everything is normal. When I see lymphocytes that are higher, if you will, than the neutrophils, and in this case, her lymphocytes were 47 and her neutrophils were 38, um, that points me to what we call in the functional medicine world, a metabolic rejectivity of foods. So it's a trigger for me, even though there was definitely something going on with her in the gut, it's a trigger for me to think foods are now gonna become even more important to look at diving deeper into those peptides to figure out what's causing the inflammation. And I put there on the left side of the screen, this came out of her stool test. We did find elevated calprotectin, which is a very strong inflammatory marker. And she was also positive for Citrobacter and Klebsiella and, and a culture. Um, but we dove into the foods, right? So while we were also treating and healing the gut, we looked at her foods and her food zoomers, and she was absolutely the perfect patient because she followed it to a T. She restricted everything I asked her to restrict while we were also treating the gut. And within sh three short weeks, truly three weeks after this woman has been suffering for years and years and years, she had a significant resolution of symptoms by cleaning up the gut and removing those foods that were causing a problem. Her energy level was getting better. She was able to go out more and felt like she had more control over her bowels. And at that three week mark, she had only had one episode of diarrhea. At six weeks, diarrhea was totally gone. Bloating and gas that she was experiencing was gone. Her energy was getting back to where she could remember feeling really good all day and it was consistent. And then just as a bonus, some of the aches and pains that we had discovered along the way, right, leading to that self-proclaimed fibromyalgia, she reported having none of. Okay, so simple, right? It sounds really simple, but that's where the zoomers were so important to me on the foods because what I found was, is we were able to pick up some things that we wouldn't have necessarily found had we just run the food panel without the zoomers. And I always like to make sure that I can dig as deep as I can so that we don't miss anything. As people are investing in both time and money, we wanna make sure that they're really getting as much information as we can give them so that we're not always backtracking in order to relieve people of their symptoms. So here's the thing, do we have to compromise on how many Zoomers we run? Well, maybe, right? Um, and, and, and it's really a cool thing because Vibrant has done this awesome thing to create these bundles, right? These packages. So when we run a bundle um, with the 96 foods, it's really very economical. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about money because I know a lot of people are probably cringing right now. Like I can't stand talking to patients about money or that's one of the biggest challenges. And I'll tell you, it's actually one of my favorites because there's some really great ways to overcome the financial question that we have. So hang tight with me for a little bit and we're gonna talk about that. But in the meantime, we can see that it really doesn't have to be outrageous when we look at this. So if you order the 96 food panel with Vibrant, now we can start adding bundles um, of Zoomers and they start at bundles of four, right? So we can start with four, basically you're looking at an extra hundred dollars and then it goes up from there all the way through the 11 Zoomers. So very economical to start adding those on. And once we start to create value for the patient, those numbers actually are not very scary at the end of that conversation. So let's talk about another patient, because when we say which Zoomers to run, theoretically, I would love to run every single Zoomer and every single patient, but you all know out there that that may or may not be realistic for a variety of reasons, some reasonable and some maybe not so reasonable. This was a patient, this was a young girl, she's 10 years old, she came to me with a previous diagnosis of Hashimoto's thyroiditis from a children's hospital, and what we found was that she actually wasn't necessarily She actually also is suffering pretty badly from hyperparathyroidism. And 
while we're still currently seeing her, this is a relatively new patient for me and the case is not completely done, with any autoimmune, one of the things I automatically turn to is looking at foods. And this was the type of conversation mom and dad had already spent you know, a lot of money and a lot of time invested and they were really scared and nervous. And they actually came to me and said, oh, we had her allergies tested already. And when we had gotten a copy of the results, from the hospital, we had seen that it was actually IgE testing that was done and she came back sensitive to, oh, basically every nut under the planet. And when we had explained the value of the food zoomer along with the food sensitivity test and the difference between this test and an IgE test, mom and dad were totally on board, but we actually chose not to run the nuts because being that she came back sensitive on the IgE, she wasn't gonna consume those at this point anyway. So as we were picking and choosing what tests to run, we all agreed to run some of the other Zoomers and leave that out. So again, there is a time and a place not to run all 11. We want it to make sense for the patient. Um, we want it to clinically correlate and we can go from there. So this just gives you an example of what that looked like. And you can see, look at some of those Zoomers, right? Wheat, corn, dairy, I mean, off the charts all over the place. So especially with an autoimmune case with a child who's still not feeling well and not being treated where it's under control at this point, the foods and the zoomers were gonna play a huge role for us in that treatment plan. All right, let's get into a little bit of the business side of that now, right? Which is where I said we were gonna go. And some of you are gonna probably cringe when I say this next part, but I want you to come with me with a real open mind as I explain this slide, okay? Most of us out there, right, are doctors, clinicians, nutritionists, what have you, pick the profession that you're in. And we have this code of professional conduct that we're trying to achieve, right, every day. And we're also trying to achieve this individualized approach based on our knowledge or any data that we can control. Here's what we also are, and here's where the cringing comes in, right? We're also salespeople right? We have to have this charisma. We have to be able to negotiate, if you will, to a certain degree with our, with our clients and our patients as to how they're going to move forward through their care. By the way, we're all in business to make money, right? Like making money is not a dirty, scary thing. At the end of the day, we've got to pay our staff and ourselves and keeps our, keep our lights on and pay mortgages and car payments, right? Like everybody else. So the fact that we want to also increase our revenue in order to keep our business growing and look at it this way so that we can help more patients becomes really important when we're looking at some of these sessions, right? We also want to look potentially at scripts and programs based on our sales success. So one of the things we're going to look back on after all of this too is how well did you do, right? How well did you do? So as we go through this, I want you to think about your communication with your patients and are you really good at some of these aspects as a doctor or a clinician who also needs to take that sales into consideration because we are definitely selling healthcare, we are selling outcomes, and we are now trying to sell, if you will, the Zoomers that we want to put into that package for that patient. And we can be taught how to talk to patients. It's really cool. There's all kinds of research out there that says communication improves adherence and improves outcomes, right? Which is outstanding. Um, it also increases patient compliance and overall satisfaction, right? So when, when a patient knows that they've been communicated well with, they're gonna have more buy-in, they're gonna feel better about that experience. And it's also gonna build more trust to be able to follow our recommendations when we say, hey, the Zoomers are a must. This is gonna help you get to where you need. So when we start out, right, before we even make that recommendation of the Zoom burn bundle and which one we're gonna pick, I want you to listen to your patient, right? And this is like um, office visit 101, right? We're gonna listen to the patient because they are going to tell us everything that we need to know in order to bring that back around to explain to them why the Zoomers are gonna become so important. Okay, so very first thing we do is we just listen. We take all of that in really intently. And then we've got to figure out with what we want to do, right? So picking the right package for them, we want to define why this is quality and how important that is. So going back to, you know, the importance of the lab we decided to use, right? And the fact that we trust in their technology and we trust in their procedures and their policies, we're going to define the quality, right? Not only of the test, but of the company. Company. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to demonstrate some value, right? So if the patient doesn't understand the value of the Zoomers, they're not going to sign up for that, 
right? They need to have value. And then part of that is building trust, knowing that we are making the recommendation because we truly believe this is the right thing for you and for no other reason. So those three things within your communication are going to be super, super important in order to get them to say yes to running those food zoomers. So let's think about that. Quality, trust. If you were going to go, um, let's see, rock climbing, and you were going to go to the store to get some equipment in order to accomplish that goal, and you need some ropes, right? So you're going to be dangling from who knows how many hundreds of feet, held on by some skimpy little belt, right? Um, where this is actually really, truly very dangerous, right? Like life-altering, life-threatening. What kind of ropes would you want to buy? Would you want to buy the ones that are on sale or the ones that are the least expensive? Would you want to buy the ones that aren't specifically necessarily designed for the activity that you are going to engage in? Do you worry about that quality? And would you trust in that quality because the price looks right? Or are you potentially going to go, you know what? I am willing to spend what I need to spend in order to get the outcome I want so that I can trust the capability of that rope, know that it was made properly, know that it's specifically designed just for the activity that I'm going to participate in. And Zoomers are no different, right? So regardless of what we're going to spend, is it the right test? Will it be the right quality? Do we trust in the company that we're utilizing and the outcome that we're going to get? And the answer in this case should be a resounding yes. Okay. Now, I want to point you to think about not only the tests that you're doing, but why you're doing it. And this is one of the things that as we work with a lot of our clients on communication and a patient visit is typically missed. So let's back up for a second. All of you know exactly who you are and all of you know exactly what you do. And when that patient comes in, they're gonna find out who you are and they're gonna find out what you do. Where a lot of the disconnect is in that trust and in that adherence from that patient goes way beyond the who and the what, but it turns into the why we do things, okay? So I want you to start to think about your communication with your clients to tie back why we actually will recommend the Zoomers. So, um, Joe, I'm so glad that you came in to see me today. This is fantastic. We have this awesome test. We're gonna look at some food sensitivities and we're gonna run some what's called Zoomer bundles. They're gonna look at these foods in a little bit more of a detailed way. Um, it is X amount of dollars, you're ready to get going. And you can see where I'm going here now. Like maybe he'll say yes, but really there, there's not a whole lot of value in that quite yet for the patient. So where I may understand why Joe needs it based on why he came in, Joe may not understand that. So if I change my dialogue to Joe, this is so great. I'm so excited to share with you that I know that you have been struggling with irritable bowel syndrome for the last 15 years. And as a result, it's been really hard to attend parties because you never know when you're gonna to need to use the bathroom. And what's worse than being in the bathroom for 20 minutes, knowing there's a line standing outside of that, right? And that, you know, as a result of that, you're all nervous and wanting to get through sitting in the bathroom to get out faster. Wouldn't it be so phenomenal to know that there's a trigger that stimulates that irritable bowel response for you, that if we could find it, and eliminate it, you actually would no longer have that issue ever again. How valuable would that be to you, right? Isn't that pretty cool? Well, now you can see how the patient, how Joe might get really excited to think, oh my God, my social life can come back, right? What if it's a matter of a patient saying, you know what? I am having such a hard time. I have these two beautiful twin grandbabies and it's so hard for me now to sit on the floor and play with them. And I'm having such a hard time getting up, you know, off the floor once that happens. Again, what if we could find the triggers and some of the foods that you're eating that are causing an inflammatory response leading to joint inflammation that's prohibiting you from playing with the grandchildren? What if it was as simple as eliminating some of those you would see the inflammation or feel that the inflammation is going down, see that you would have less joint pain, be able to get on the floor and play with those grandbabies. How much value would that have to you, right? So that why hits on a little bit more of that emotional connection that patients have for their own healthcare to have buy-in to understand the value, 
right? And a lot of times, because we get wrapped up in our own heads of knowing this is the right thing and the best thing and the surefire thing to do for the patient, until the patient actually gets it, that's where we find that there's going to be a lot of resistance and a lot of kickback from patients um, where they may not sign up for the program, right? They might say, oh, no, you know what? I'm not going to do that right now. And we need to keep creating that why, okay? So this comes back to what I said in the beginning where we need to listen to the patients as to what their story is so that we can tie this back. Now, you all know those patients that walk into your office that don't give you any story, right? They're very straightforward. I just have pain or I just have diarrhea. And there, there's no real emotional connection to, to what's going on at this point. Then it's our job to dig a little bit, right? So how would it change your life if we got rid of the symptoms that you came in to see me for? What is it in your world and your daily activities that this prevents you from doing that you would like to do? Okay, so start to ask some of these open-ended questions of your patients to get that answer so that when it's time to talk about the Zoomers, one, they know you are listening, and then two, you can tie that back in to justifying the why in order to accomplish the end goal. I am stuck. There we go, I think. All right, there's technology at its best. So when we create the why, there's a couple of things that that truly does for us, okay? And in the research, we've seen that having that why is actually going to start to build some loyalty and create an understanding. So again, it's that representation of the what and how it will actually work for the patient to achieve a goal, okay? So it's a transition, if you will it's gonna create more value for that patient. And then ultimately it actually creates success for both of you, right? So success is, and, and I always joke with my patients when they come in and we go through their, their list of their main concerns and their goals and what they're trying to achieve. Um, once I understand what they want, I always say to them, you know what? I'm gonna tell you what my goal is for you. One, it's to meet your goals. And two, that you walk back into my office at the end of our treatment plan or treatment time together saying to me, you know what, Dr. Cindy, I don't even know why I'm here. I feel so fantastic. There's just absolutely nothing else going on. And I say, you know what? And I love those visits. Those are my favorite visits because then we know at that point we have achieved some level of success together, right? And it's so much fun to sit with those patients at the end of that treatment plan, which really isn't the end of their health care. It's just the end of the beginning of the journey. And now we can take that success and move it into wellness care and preventative care, right? To move forward, to really, truly keep them healthy and keep that value and that understanding going. We're creating health, right? At the end of the day, we're creating health. And for you, all of you out there who run a business on some level, whether you own your own, whether you work for somebody, whether you do both, we are creating income, right? And we're all in business to create income. So there is a benefit to not only ordering these tests because of the health and the success, but because it can also drive revenue, which again, is not a bad thing for us to do. It helps us stay in business to create um, more ability to help more people. And now you can grow and we have just way more, more to offer. And every tool in your toolbox, right, becomes so important so that you have more things that you can generate. So let's go back to that rope, for example, right? I showed you one that was $9 and I showed you one that was $200. What if we had a couple in there? So you saw what, I think we had a, a green one and a blue one, right? What if somebody's actually wanting purple? As ridiculous as that might seem, a purple rope while they're climbing because their whole outfit is purple, their theme is purple, their brand is purple, right? And as silly as that sounds, we may want a couple different colors of ropes or we may want a couple different designs or we might want a couple um, thicknesses depending on how many we need or how high we're climbing. Isn't it great that within the Zoomer world, we have a couple choices there too, right? It's not a one size fits all. You have to do this or you have to do nothing. In that case of Catherine, we were able to leave out the nuts because at that particular time, at that moment for that patient, there wasn't value in that one, but the rest of them had some value to her so that we can pick and choose um, and have that availability. So that's really cool too, in order to fill your toolbox and have some variety. So I'm gonna challenge you when you're talking to your patients, as you explain the Zoomers, it's, I recommend that we do the foods along with this bundle of Zoomers and here is why, and then finish the end, this is why, 
with those reasons that you found in order to help the Or if you put a little sticky note, you know, on your computer or your notes that you're taking and you go, just remember to tell them the why. Just write the word why down on that sticky note so that you remember to explain that. I think that you're going to find the ability to have patients buy into this is going to go up drastically. Now, at the end of the day, patient might not follow what you want them to do, right? We've all had those patients. And as much as I'd love to tell you that I have 100% success in every recommendation I've ever made, that's just flat out not true, right? But the last thing I want the patient to ever do is to walk out without a plan because they didn't like the initial plan that was presented. So I also would ask you to consider have sort of that backup plan in the back of your head. So like, let's say, for example, I suggest to the patient that I really do want all 11 Zoomers and I could see that I'm getting some resistance for whatever reason, right? I might not know that obstacle yet, or I might even be aware of that obstacle. If I sense that this may not go as I want, there's also nothing wrong in saying, you know what? I know that you're consuming excessive amounts of dairy and wheat and there's some gut issues, right? And you substitute a lot of corn in sometimes when you're trying to watch the gluten issues and egg is found in everything. Let's just take those four, right? And I might say to the patient, you know what? We have this great plan where we can look at 96 foods to see if there's any sensitivities there. And we can throw in a bundle of those four zoomers and we can start there, right? Let's see if those four things that you're consuming massive amounts of, and we know typically can lead to a lot of inflammatory changes. Let's see if those are considered safe foods for you at this point. And then sometimes after running those, when the patient now sees the value because they've actually got the test where they may not have seen it before, we certainly can always go back and add on the other Zoomers later if we're not getting the 100% success that we want. So have that backup plan. And maybe that should say plan B, C, D, and E. There's always choice, right? And let those patients make the decision. So I'm not necessarily a big fan of the all or nothing thing. A lot of times I will then say to patients, we have some choices, right? We can do all of it. Truthfully, we can do none of it, or we can pick and choose somewhere in the middle. This is what I would recommend. And then I turn it over to my patients to either confirm or deny that they agree with the recommendation. Now, Here's the other place that we typically fail. A lot of us at that point will just kind of sit there. And I see this all the time when I evaluate practitioners in their practice. They tell patients all these amazing things that are gonna happen as a result of picking these tests, right? And how the outcomes are gonna be so fantastic. And then they just wait. And some patients will go, great, I'm in. You know, here's my credit card, right? Can't wait to do this. Let's get that blood draw ready to go like ASAP. And some patients will just kind of stare back at you. And this comes back to kind of sales 101. So again, forgive that, that, that term of that word sales. But at the end of the day, we have to ask the patients if they're ready, right? So um, Joe, you know what? I know we spent a lot of time talking about how the, the panel of food, food Zoomers is going to help you and it's going to accomplish what we need. Does that make sense? Absolutely, Dr. Cindy. Are you ready to get started? Great. May I go ahead and schedule you for the, the blood draw or the finger sticks so that we can get this panel run? Absolutely. And asking for that commitment does two things for you, really. One is it confirms that the patient is ready to go, right? And we need that patient commitment, right? We need that verbal or that written, however you do it in your office. We need that commitment that they're on board. The other thing that it does is if they say no or they balk at that, you now have an opportunity to go back and ask them or discover what the obstacle is, right? Joe, what would keep you from doing this? Why, you know, why the confusion? Why the doubt? And you can start to ask those questions. Oop, and we get stuck again on the slides. There we go. You can start those questions because when the patient looks like this, and I'm hoping there's a chuckle or two out there, when the patient looks like this after you ask for the commitment, You've got to step back out of it now and go, oh boy, all right, where did I lose you? Where did I confuse you? Where did I not provide quality? Where did I not provide value? Where did I lose the trust? And we turn that face into the big happy smile face in which we know them, the patient is ready to go. So what happens is, is we need to create certain expectations. And when those expectations then are not met, now we know that there is going to be resistance and we have to take that level of resistance and move it really to a new level of engagement. So this is a really tough part of the communication for a lot of us because we, we tend to kind of give up. 
right? So if the patient goes, no, I don't wanna do it. I see doctors and clinicians do this all the time. They go, okay, right? They go, okay. Or the worst alternative is even then to become pushy and try to force the patient almost into running this test because you know best. And although you do know best and you do understand the value of these Zoomers, pushing the patient into doing this is also then gonna sound very pitchy and very ingenuine, right? And we don't wanna do that. So now what we need to do is we need to understand the barriers for that patient. You know what, Dr. Sinney, I can't stand having my blood drawn. I pass out every single time I do it, I'm so nervous. You know what, no problem. Not only do we have a way to make you super comfortable in this office, but we actually have a couple different options, right? So that blood draw that you're used to in the antecubital fossa, I get it. That, that's never fun for anybody. But we also have a finger stick that we could do where you feel a little pinch in the finger. And then you know what? We finger paint. We, we color some cards with that red blood in order to fill it in. You know what? That way to get the blood might be a little bit less stressful for you. How would that one sound? Oh, you know what, Dr. Sinney? I think that one would keep me from passing out. Can we do that one? Absolutely. Are you ready to get started looking at these food zoomers, right? So that's one thing. What if the barrier is really financial? Okay. And that's going to be the big one. Oh, Dr. Cindy, you know, that, that's, that sounds really expensive to spend an extra $1,100 on the food zoomer test, right? Now we can see that we didn't create enough value that that money makes sense. Let me, let me go on a tangent here for a second, and I'm going to give you an example of what I'm talking about. And I realize I can't see everybody raising their hands at this point. But for those of you out there, I'm sure we've got tons of men and tons of women on this call. I'm going to ask you a question. How many of you in the last, let's say, five years have bought a brand new pair of shoes? Right? Show of hands. A bunch, I, I'm assuming almost everybody's hand has gone up in the last five years you've bought a new pair of shoes. Okay? So the first question goes, well, how many of you have spent... $20 on a pair of shoes. And I'm guessing most of you will put your hands up. How many have spent 50? Mm, maybe a few hands are going down at this point. How many of you have spent $100 on a pair of shoes? Well, okay, and again, you're not in front of me, but I'm guessing more and more hands are going down. How many of you have spent $500 on a pair of shoes? And when I typically ask this question in a room where I can see all of you, there might be one or two or a couple hands going up that say, yes, I've spent over $500 on a pair of shoes. Now, I will tell you right now, the most expensive pair of shoes that I own are $795. And while all of you are thinking, wow, she must do a lot of Zoomers in order to be able to afford a pair of $795 shoes, I will tell you that I actually have a cowboy boot problem, <laughs> okay? And that is my addiction. So I spend a lot of money on cowboy boots. They're important to me. I love them. I wear them everywhere and they have value. And some of you are shaking your head going, oh my God, she's insane. $795 on a pair of boots. But now let's back up. I'm going to quit medicine and I'm going to open up a shoe manufacturing company. And I'm going to create a pair of shoes that are waterproof. And in Chicago, where I live, that's pretty important. They're waterproof. And by the way, they tie themselves. So I don't have to bend over and tie them. And just so you know, they change heel height. So, you know, sometimes my pants are a little bit longer, sometimes they're a little bit shorter. So heel height is really important and they'll just change based on the pair of pants that I put on. And you know what? They never go out of style. I know that sounds weird, but they just don't. They're gonna be cool for the rest of my life. And here's the other thing. They are so comfortable. Like I can walk around all day in these pair of shoes and I don't even notice that I was in shoes. My feet feel so amazing at the end of the day, right? And any need that you could possibly have for the pair of shoes, I'm going to create. And here's the best part about it. You never need to purchase another pair of shoes ever again. This is it. One pair for the rest of your life. Now, here's my question I'm going to ask all of you sitting out there virtually. How many of you would spend $500 on that pair of shoes? And what's interesting is if you were all sitting in front of me, not everybody, but a good majority of you are going to raise your hand and go, you know what? I get it because I probably spend $50 every so often. It probably spent more than 500. Makes sense. Oh my God. I never even have to think about what shoes to pull out of my closet or pack. It's only one pair. Right. And there's going to have this amazing value. Now, for those of you that would just prefer to be barefoot for the rest of your life and you don't even like shoes, you may say I'm still not spending $500 in shoes. And that goes exactly to my point about recommending Zoomers. For those of you that are barefoot all the time and don't want shoes at all, I didn't create any value for you. For those of you that are spending money on shoes all the time and they've got those white stains from walking in the snow and your feet hurt at the end of the day and they're always coming untied, 
now I've created value, right? By finding something that you actually need and then asking you to purchase it. So let's go back. We have to uncover a need that the patient has. And it could be as simple as just feeling better, getting out of pain, getting on the floor with their grandchildren, not needing a bathroom at a party, right? That's their need. Now we come back and we show how the Zoomers will actually meet their need. By running this test, we are going to get the information needed to pull the correct foods out of your diet to lower the inflammation level in order to restore good, healthy function where you are symptom-free feeling amazing. Does that make sense for you? Are you ready to get started? Uncover the need, meet the need, ask for the commitment, watch for any objections, overcome those objections, build trust with that patient, and order the test. How cool would that be? So we have to find what's important to that patient. For me, it would be cowboy boots. For somebody else, it's good health, and they are willing to spend the money. So be challenged and be excited when somebody comes back to you, especially with that financial resistance, because in my opinion, you have an opportunity to go back to look at that to see how you can overcome that objection. Here's the other thing that you can do if it's a financial challenge. Turn around and look at the patient and say, okay, I totally understand that there is a financial conversation that we need to have in order for us to move forward. Give me a budget. What are you willing to spend? So if you come back to them and you know you, you want to order a test that's $1,000, a couple thousand dollars when it's all said and done, right? With all of these Zoomers that we have available to us. What if the patient comes back and says, you know what? I've got about $500 I could spend. Outstanding. Let's figure out how to best use your money. And that's when you're going to start going back through the different Zoomers, right? And figuring out, okay, you know what? You don't even like seafood, right? Like you could care less if you ever touched anything in seafood ever again. Maybe that's not the best use of our money. But you are living on corn chips and corn tortillas, you know what? We've got to look at the corn zoomer, right? And we pick and choose based on, again, digging into that patient's lifestyle and finding out what their needs are in order to pick the right zoomers. I am going to spend that $500 to the best of my ability to get you the most information. And then we find those couple of zoomers, right? That are going to give us the most bang for our buck. And I'll tell you what, Joe, if we do this and you're only 80% better at the end of the day, and we're a couple months into this, you know, maybe at that point, then there'll be another 500 bucks that we can spend to finish the Zoomers. And best case scenario, we don't even get there. Maybe the Zoomers that you and I have decided are best for you are going to hit the nail on the head and we're going to have 100% improvement as a result of that. Really, really cool, right? So the goal here is to turn all our no's into yeses. That's our goal, doing it nicely, kindly, with trust, with consideration, without being pushy, right? So that whole world word, word sales, right? I don't want you to think pushy salesperson, right? Sale is just the idea of uncovering a need, meeting a need, asking for the commitment, and then moving forward. That's all it is. And we're going to take those no's and we're going to turn them into yeses to help that patient be way more successful. Then what? Now we have to provide confident direction. I'll tell you why I can provide confident direction because I have confidence in the lab that I'm using. And I explain that to the patient. I trust in them. I've done a lot of homework. I've done a lot of research. I've talked to my rep, right? You guys all have amazing reps out there from, um, from Vibrant. They can, wealth of knowledge, huge education, right? So I sometimes will explain some of the things that my reps have even shared with me, which is why I have the confidence, right? The research that goes behind the testing with the Zoomers. And we'll share that with patients to know that, look, the direction I'm pointing you in, I'm confident in then the patient can have confident direction as to how they want to move forward through their care as well. And when they have that, they feel good about their choices. Because the last thing we want is for the patient to come and go, oh, I'm not so sure I should have run that Zoomer test. I'm not sure that even makes sense, right? No patient should ever have that thought when they go home. They should be like, you know what? I am so excited to get those test results. I gotta tell you, you know, I tell my patients all the time, I'm like, it takes me about three weeks to get these test results back. We will call you the minute the test results cross my desk and we will go over them, right? I'll get texts one week in, doc, are those test results back yet? 10 days in, doc, have you received those yet, right? Three minutes before that three week mark, have they come in yet? Like patients are so excited to get this stuff back. And why? Because we've gotten them jazzed as to the results that they're gonna get providing that confident direction and utilizing the Zoomer profiles. 
And then we want to have guided improvement, right? There's continuous improvement. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to get the results back, right? We're going to show you how we're going to create a very specific food plan for you. Not a generic one you found on Google, but this is specifically for you, right? Here's the things you can consume. Here's the things I don't want you to consume. Here's how long I don't want you to consume them for. Here's what you should actually see as a result of that, right? So here's what I expect in three weeks. Here's what I expect in six weeks. Here at the end of the time of eliminating these foods from, from your daily life, we're going to revisit all of your symptoms and see that, oh my goodness, 80, 90, 100% of those are actually gone, if not significantly better. So we're going to continue to reinforce their goals of what we're trying to get to. We're going to measure progress through continuing to see, talk, communicate, whether it's in person, through telehealth, through, you know, technology, right, to measure their progress as to how they're doing once we've gotten these results, and then continually provide encouragement, like, you are doing great. You are doing absolutely awesome, and you know what? I am so thrilled that we picked these Zoomers to run, because look at what we've been able to accomplish in a three, six, nine, 12 week period after suffering for so many years with these symptoms without getting the help you want. So it's really excited seeing the continuous improvement through our guide, right? Through the, e even the presentation, right? Like we look at some of these Zoomer results, there is so much information that Vibrant is providing that you can pick and choose from and what you wanna give that patient. Um, it's, it's invaluable, truly, right, to help them along the way versus even, you know, if they were to order a test somewhere, let's say through the internet with no doctor or clinician interaction, with no nice brochure, um, brochure that's a hard, terrible way to say that, with, with, with a guide, right, that you get afterward with all of the good information about where we source these foods, how to eliminate them, what to look for, um, you know, Information is just invaluable, right? And, and the tools are enormous versus just a eat this and don't eat that approach. So I love all that information on our guided improvement in order to walk that patient through. So what does it look like when all the pieces come together, right? Well, it looks like success, right? It, it's, it's a matter of taking the patient walked into your door saying, I have X, I'm suffering from Y, and I can't get over Z. And as the clinician, we're saying, you know what? We have this amazing set of tools in our toolbox that's going to actually take care of all of your health cons concerns. And the food sensitivity test, along with the food zoomers, just happens to be one of those amazing tools that we have, right? And when we explain to the patient the who, the what, and the why it's going to help them accomplish this through actually a very simple test, now we've got complete success. So what should we expect? Well, we should expect to become knowledgeable. Make sure you understand exactly what all the Zoomers are about. By the end of today, you should understand all of that. And quite frankly, if you don't, then get on the horn to your rep and make sure you get all of your questions answered if they weren't completely answered. And we're gonna do our very best all day today to get those answered for you, right? I want you to expect to be so educated that you walk back into your practice. What's today? Today's Friday, for those of you that work Saturday, tomorrow morning, and start recommending these Zoomers to your patients because you understand the value and you're excited to teach your patients the value. I also want you to get fairly comfortable with being uncomfortable. I said sales in the beginning and some of you are going, oh no, mm -mm, don't even wanna listen to this, right? I'm not a salesman, I'm a clinician, I'm a nutritionist, I'm a doctor, I'm a physician. This is, I don't do sales. Well. We might wanna change the word so that you're not uncomfortable with it, but at the end of the day, again, you're asking somebody to purchase or to buy in or to commit to a plan, okay? In a sense that is sales. I want you to get comfortable being uncomfortable going through this approach. Uncover the need, meet the need, ask for the commitment, overcome any objections, and then move forward. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. Do it with integrity. This is not pitchy. This is not pushy. This is not about, ooh, I can make $20,000 this month if I sell food Zoomers, right? That's not what this is about at all. This is about having a tool in your toolbox that you know can create an outcome of health and success that has value to the patient. And when we present it in such a way, because we truly believe in what we are recommending, we do that with integrity. So please move forward. And you are going to find that this becomes easier and easier because when you believe in what the product is that you are offering, the patient is also going to see your sincerity and buy in as well. All right, let's review a little bit. We have a couple minutes left here and I want to be respectful of all of your time. So let's review. 
and you've heard it a couple times, listen to the needs of the patient. And if they're not forthcoming, just ask. Ask open-ended questions to see what they're trying to accomplish. Two, explain how you will meet their needs. What you do in your office, what you believe, how you practice, the tools you're recommending, the Zoomer tests that you're going to show them, explain how and the why that's gonna meet their needs. Educate and ask permission to treat that patient. Overcome any objections. Now, here's the one little take home I wanna tell you, and this is gonna sound really, really tough. I'm going to tell you right now that if the patient walks out of your office without agreeing to run some version of this Zoomer bundle test, that's your fault. And that sounds really harsh, but again, that's gonna come back to the patient didn't truly understand the value and you didn't truly overcome their objections in a way that's comfortable for the patient to agree to move forward. If that's anything that you guys all out there need help on, I would love to help you on that. Um, it's my passion. It's something I get really jazzed about because I think that can really make or break the patient's experience in the office to get the outcomes they're looking for. Set expectations after getting the info needed. Let them know what the test is about, why the test is valuable. Let them know when it's gonna come back. Let them know what they can expect when they go over it with you. Let them know what's gonna happen once they start to implement this in their life and what those expected outcomes should look like so that they're prepared for what you're going to ask them to do and what they're going to receive as a result. And at the very end, every time you meet with a patient and you discuss food zoomers, come out of that, that interaction and ask yourself, what could I have done differently to produce a more successful result if I didn't get one? And it's a learning opportunity, right? To improve what we do, to get better at our skill set and our communication with our patient. Because at the end of the day, if you're truly recommending you feel something that you feel has value to the patient, they came in for your help. I always like to, to tell my clients this too. You know, if we were the type of profession where the guy was standing on the corner in the clown suit, waving the, you know, the sign, come on in free car wash today, right? And I'm not picking on any business that does that. But if we were that type of profession and it felt a little cheesy, I could totally understand why what I'm asking you all to do would be harder. But at the end of the day, everybody that walks through your door actually came in because they want your help, right? Nobody was forced or lured in. They come in already saying, I don't feel well. Here's what I'm hoping to accomplish. So they're already asking you for the tools. And the Food Zoomer is one of the best ones out there, one of the most unique ones out there, and quite frankly, has changed the course of my practice since I've been implementing that to just... <laughs> basically increase outcomes um, as well as adherence and compliance. And at the end of the day, that's all we want is really healthy patients. So take a look at your communication, right? The business side of things in that appointment with that patient. Was it a failure? Which at the end of the day, I'm gonna tell you is still good because there is always something to learn from those failures, but reevaluate that and figure out what you could do different. Or did you have great success in order to lead the patient in the direction you wanna lead them? So. What are reasons not to run Zoomers? Well, really none, <laughs> okay? And at the end of the day, knowing perfectly well, this is not an all or none world. Yes, you are gonna have the occasional patients that for whatever reasons, or even yourself, choose not to do it. And that will wind up being okay. Um, if you really cannot find any reasons to run Zoomers, then we need to help you. So reach out. Um, you are more than welcome to contact me. I would venture to guess any other speaker would probably put the same offer on the table. I know all of the represent representatives at Vibrant are willing to do this. Let us help you find reasons to run the Zoomers to increase your success. You guys have been great. I have been running full speed for like 55 minutes. I hope that you guys have gotten something from this, a little bit of a clinical pearl, a take home, a little piece of better communication in order to increase your business utilizing Zoomers. All I can say is let's go get started, right? Let's start utilizing this test. See what you can um, get out of it for your patients and do me a favor, share. Share some of the outcomes with us. Share your success story. Shoot me a quick text and say, you know what? Um, here's what I did and here's how it worked. And let's get everybody on board and get those patients healthy. You guys have been really great. I appreciate all of your time. I'm gonna hang for a second in case there's any other questions, but there's my contact if you guys wanna reach out. Um, I'm here when you need me. Let's go have fun. Thank you. Thanks, Vibrant.
Thanks, Dr. Cindy, so much. Um, I think there is one question if you have just a minute. I do. Uh, let's see here. Actually, there's two very quick ones. First one from Maureen, how much more are you charging over and above the cost of the lab test? So if you're client billing, if you are in a state where you can client bill, um, and I think this probably varies, maybe like what is the percentage or what's an average percentage of markup? Yeah, that's a great question. And Sarah, you're okay with me answering that? Because we're not always supposed to do that in well, clinical. You okay with me doing that? Yeah, that's fine. Go for okay. it. <laughs> okay. And I'll just deny that I ever did that if anybody says anything. How's that? <laughs> um, and, and it's a great valid question. I will tell you that in my practice, and I am a cash only practice all the way around. I knew, do no insurance. My general rule of thumb is I actually double most testing. Um, so if something's $100, I typically will double that. Now, I do have some exceptions to my rule, and that is when we start to get up into some of the, the higher values, um, that one I struggle with a little bit. So like, let's say my cost on a test winds up being about $1,500. Sometimes, and you know, it depends what I set up, but sometimes I have trouble, and this is just my own emotional thing, I'm doubling that to, to make that big of a profit, if you will, in terms of that dollar amount, because because it does get a little bit higher end for the patient. And I typically run more than just foods and zoomers, right? So there can be a handful of tests where then we get into a price range that it is legitimate where people just truly may not be budgeted for that, okay? Um, you know, at the same time, I know I told you, don't be afraid. And, and I'll tell you, don't be afraid to charge for the value. Part of the reason that I do charge on top of that test is incorporated into that which I have no problems explaining to patients either is, you know, 20 some years of, of experience and education. So you get all of my knowledge, the time that I spend evaluating, look at it, looking at it, creating an individualized plan, right? There's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that also goes into, right? More than just ordering and getting a test in which there is value. So don't devalue yourselves either when you guys are doing this. There is a lot that can be built in. Um, and just remember, anywhere else you go in life that you pay for something, you're not paying anybody's cost, right? Um, every business, there's there's an upsell, if you will, in terms of there's a profit built in, whether it's 10% or 100%, um, you know, when you purchase something. So don't be afraid of those things. And I think that you kind of answered the second question from Laura. Um, how do you cover the cost of the time it takes to interpret the results? Yeah. Uh, and so I think you sort of answered that, but it sounds like you are bundling, you're, you're kind of bundling into the cost of the test, a consult or some of that. Yeah. And there's a couple of different ways to do that. So in my office personally, you know, and everything is based on time. I'm a big fan of time um, when you set a uh, fee for service fee, uh, cash for service fees. So what happens is, is the cost of my test incorporates a lot of that back work and I mean even like listen you know staff is involved right I pay staff who has to put the test together and get it shipped out and then you know print it off right there, there's a lot of cost in um, that test versus just what vibrant charges me right so you have to factor all of that in into the price of the test now I also though in my private practice I don't and you certainly can and I know lots of practitioners that do this going over it actually isn't incorporated in that so when you come back and you go over test results with me um, we set an office visit and then I have fees for that in 15 minute increments because as you all well know too some patients we can go through a test result and you know 15 minutes no problem get all their questions answered and then you guys have those patients right that are in your in your office for an hour, an hour and a half, two hours. And there's every variation, right? So what I found is when I had a set price, and this is just, you know, my practice, when I had a set price, and then I had those patients that needed an hour, hour and a half, two hours, and a lot of them do, and that's that's great. Now I found that, well, boy, in the back of my head, oh my goodness, I'm spending all this time with this patient. I need to get them out of the room, right? Like I'm not making enough money to keep my lights on. And, and there's really in the business world, there's value to that. So long-winded answer to a great question is I've determined in my business what I need to make per hour, not only what I need, but what I want, right? So there's need to keep your lights on, pay your staff, et cetera. And then there's lifestyle of how I want to live and what I need to make. So I've calculated from that number what my value is per 15 minutes with an office visit. So when you come back to discuss these things, if we you know, can do it in 30 minutes, it's one charge. If we do it in an hour and a half, it's three times that charge. And patients are told that up front. So they know very, very clearly 
what those fees are going to be. And some are, some are funny. Some are like, oh, I only want 30 minutes of Dr. Cindy's time. I don't want to pay for an hour and a half. No problem. We'll get it done. Or you know what? I have like 200 questions. I could hang out with Dr. Cindy all day. No problem. We will schedule, schedule you absolutely longer. So I still like to charge for my time so that I am all in with that patient. And I don't have those thoughts of like, oh my goodness, I just spent an hour and a half with the patient. And, you know, the value is only 15 minutes worth. So I hope that kind of, Sarah, I hope that answers her question a little bit more thoroughly with how I do things. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Cindy, thank you so much. This has been a wonderful presentation. I think that this is something that a lot of healthcare providers struggle with is the balance between being a healthcare provider, but also understanding that they are a salesperson um, and how to most effectively can communicate to their patients the value of everything that they're going to recommend, whether it's lab testing or nutraceuticals or a service or their time. Um, and so you've done such a wonderful job of explaining and walking through that and, and demystifying some of that, as well as maybe removing some of the taboo from having a conversation about sales. Um, so thank you so much for your time. Oh, you are very welcome. And thank you very much. I really appreciate the opportunity. I hope you guys have a great rest of the program.